let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants as we gather in prayer, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace within each of us, that made fervent in faith, hope, and charity, we may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, now and forever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care of all, that you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For, you might, for your might is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those you know and in those who know you, you rebuke temerity. But though you are, a, you are master of might, you judge with clemency, and with much lenience you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attend, attends, att attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds. And those who are, who are just, you, mu you must be kind. And you gave your children good ground for hope, that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weaknesses. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings, and the one who searches hearts knows what, it, what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus proposed other parables, saying to the crowd, the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have all the weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. So his servant said to him, do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, no, if you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then, at harvest, I will say to the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. He proposed another parable to them. 
The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all seeds, yet when full grown, it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush, and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said to the prophet, quote, I will open my mouth in parables and I will announce what has lain hidden from the foundation of the world, unquote. Then, dismissing the crowds, he went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows good seed is the son of God. The field is the world, and good seed the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up for fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears to hear ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am always impressed with the word of God. Why shouldn't I be? But if we open our minds and hearts to the Word of God and lay it on our table next to the headlines of the day, you'll see how the Word of God speaks to us, how the Word of God shouts out to us to remain faithful, to stay focused, to be close to Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. Jesus speaks in parables, and we could sort of expand on those parables in today's events. When we got notice over the weekend that John Lewis passed away, my memories went back to the days of Martin Luther King and the marches. And some of those marches were met with violence. But the marches, because of... Dr. Martin Luther King's philosophy and theology were always focused on being peaceful. The marches are still going on throughout the world. But today there's another twist to them. And I think if we listen to the scriptures today, we can get a good view and vibe as to how the marches are going on today in our society. When the man who is the farmer who owns the land, and Jesus is saying, that's God, sets the world in motion. Everybody has a role, and everyone is invited to be part of that role. So the man, in place of God, goes out and sows good seed, and an enemy, and he names the enemy the devil, inspires evil people to do evil things. So we have the option of following the, the fertile word of God with peace, justice, and nourishment, or we have the option of following the destruction of the devil in our society. I'm updating the scriptures, updating the parables. Because if we look outside in our world today, we see these parables enacted. Yes, there are people in our society who represent justice, 
and they themselves are not good people. Some people, even though they have places of honor and power, wield the power incorrectly and unjustly. So we read about something that happened in Minneapolis, we read about things happen all over the country, and we focus on that one person whose life was taken at the knee of a policeman. Evil, wrong, sin. What's our response? Well, according to the scriptures, we're in the field and we have the choice of being the good seed or being the weeds. We have the choice of being people who follow Christ in our lives and plant justice and peace and reconciliation, or we can follow the devil and plant destruction, hate, and bigotry. The scriptures are ours for today, 2020. Jesus knew what he was talking about. Did I know, excuse me, did he know what would happen today, 2020, when he gave this parable? Don't know. But because it's the living word of God, it certainly is applicable to today. Jesus makes it very clear that each of us are called to be people who give life and nourishment to one another. He gives it in a parable, but he did it with his own life, his own example. And when alongside of us, evil walks, sometimes undistinguishable from peace, until they stand out of the crowd and destroy and kill and express prejudice and pain. You see how the wheat and the weeds are together in our society and in the Holy Scriptures? Of course, each of us gathered here, I say, of course, presuming we're people of peace. I say, of course, because I presume that we're here to understand and get closer to the Word of God and ask how the Word of God embodied in Jesus Christ can get closer to me and run my life in a way that is justified in following the Creator's Son, Jesus Christ. So as we read about a peaceful demonstration that happened 50 years ago and many demonstrations since then, we see hurt and pain being addressed by people of goodwill. And of course, Dr. Martin Luther King was the epitome of nonviolent protest. And those who followed him followed the way of peace. He was a doctor of theology. So his faith led him across the bridges, led him into the inner city. And evil, even then, rejected him, hurt him. But evil does not reign. Jesus makes it very clear through the parable. In the end, he uses words that pertain to gardening and wheat and furnace. In the end, the work of the devil will burn. Those who follow Satan will be destroyed. Well, we, we, we Christians believe that in the holy crucifixion. The work of the devil was there, leading him to the cross, but the word of God brought him back to life. So our faith is optimistic. Our faith is in right, justice, peace, Jesus. However, in our society, when we look to the right and look to the left, sometimes we don't know who are the peacekeepers and who are those who inflict pain. So the devil comes and inspires people. From the beginning of these protests, I've always personally looked at the protests with a secondary gain. There was someone or something or some force behind them those who were protesting, those who were marching for justice, those who were marching for nonviolence. There was something behind them 
that was satanic and evil. Because the peace was pushed uh, pushed aside and evil blossomed. And we've seen that from Seattle to New York. We've seen peaceful demonstrations. We've seen peace, people working for peace. We've seen neighborhoods coming together, working for peace, feeding each other, helping each other, standing up for what is right. And yet, the work of the devil still goes on. Satan is still alive and well in our society. And yet we gather here in faith and confidence, knowing that the bread of life will feed us and the bread of life will give us positive energy and positive inspiration to act justly, even in the face of violence, even sometimes at the cost of violence to us. And we've seen that through our society. People praying, being attacked, They're not being attacked out of prejudice. They're being attacked out of hate. Because those who are praying for justice and peace and reconciliation could be any color, any denomination. But those who are inspired by Satan want to end that. They want to end prayer. They want to destroy churches. They want to make their mark of Satan on society. You and I are challenged to stand up for what we believe, to to, to be that little piece of yeast that goes into the dough and overwhelms it to the point where it gets greater and greater. Jesus has challenged us today. The newspapers have challenged us today. Society has challenged us today. Illness has challenged us today. Think of all of the challenges that are here. All the weeds in our society. All the weeds amidst the wheat. And I'm going to presume we're wheat. Not that we're all saints, but we're all aspiring to be saints. Not that we're all good, but we're aspiring to be better. Following Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. So we are destined to grow as a church, grow as a community. Even while destruction is all around us. And that crucifixion was not an accident. It was a great way for God to open up our eyes 2,000 years ago and today. We're going to be crucified. Cathedrals will be burnt down. Churches will be mocked. Statues will be torn apart. Not for justice. Not for faith. But by the work of the devil. And the devil inspires people to act on his behalf. After Vatican II, and I was in the seminary and was ordained a Vatican II priest, you might say, The words like devil, Satan, and evil were sort of diminished in our theological vocabulary. We didn't talk about those things. We were cool. We were optimistic. We believe in a loving God. And I still do. But don't be fooled. Then and even now, evil is still alive. Evil is in our society. And our challenge is to counteract evil with peace, with reconciliation. One of the reasons, and I've said this before, I love so much coming to this particular church in the shadow of the UN is because what I see is diversity. I see Catholics from all over the world, whether it's Africa or Slovakia or Italy, coming together at this table. Some of us have accents. Some of us have different color skins. Some of us, our names are from the old country, whatever country that is. But yeah, we're one family. We're we're the wheat. And some of the strains of wheat might be different. We might be Italian wheat, Spanish wheat, Slovakian wheat, African wheat, Japanese wheat. But we're God's wheat. It's metaphor, of course. 
We're God's wheat. And that world out there is waiting for you and for me to nourish it so that this wheat will grow into the body of Christ more and more and flourish and feed the poor and the hungry. Feed those who are dealt with unjustly. Nourish and nurture our sisters and brothers. In Rome, we have a South American Italian Pope. Before him, a German Pope. Before him, a Polish Pope. Not necessarily in that order, but you get the idea. We are a universal church. Nobody is less than in our church. Nobody is better than in our church. We are God's people. Forget the metaphors. We're not wheat. We're not lambs. We're not sheep. We're God's people. And he came for us. And he gives us his life so that we optimistically, in light of the resurrection, can believe he's with us and mandates us to be fertile and spread the word throughout the earth. Father, we ask you to be with us as we pray for our own intentions. We pray for Mata Catalano and members of her family. May she rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all good people of justice and right that they be strengthened and during this time of persecution against Christians especially, we all look to Jesus as a source of encouragement. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our leadership, Father Baker, Cardinal Timothy, and all the parishes and our pastors, and those that we offer special prayers for. We pray to the Lord that we may stand as people of peace and justice, representing God's wheat in his holy family, the church, we pray to the Lord. For the repose of John Lewis, who marched with Martin Luther King, and who represented justice and nonviolence, and for his influence in our community of the world, we pray to the Lord. God, our Father, we've placed our prayers before you in confidence Knowing that you hear us and are with us, give us the strength each day to follow our own prayers through Christ our Lord.
Master, you, Lord God, of all the creation, the goodness of this bread, work of human hands, let it become for us the bread of life. Pray, my friends, that our prayers and sacrifices will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. O oh God, who in the one perfect sacrifice of the cross brought to completion all various sacrifices of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, our ancestors, so that what we offer in person honors your majesty and may benefit all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of our mortality for life eternal so that the cause of our downfall may become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adore your majesty and rejoice in the presence forever as together we acclaim your glory. You are indeed holy, Lord, and our hosannas praise you. For through your Son, Jesus Christ, by the power of the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice is offered to the glory of your name. Therefore, Holy Father, we humbly implore you by the same Holy Spirit to graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought for your consecration, that they may become our nourishment, the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we gather at these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. Therefore, we celebrate this memorial, Lord, of the saving passion of your Son, his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and we look forward to his second coming 
and we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognize in the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May he make all of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain the inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mother of God, Mary, her spouse Joseph, our patrons, St. John Nepomuceni, Mother Cabrini, St. Patrick, Cyril and Methodius, your apostles and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing hope. Help us, Lord, to enjoy and rejoice in this sacrifice of reconciliation. Advance the peace and salvation of the world be pleased to confirm us in faith and charity as a pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our bishops, and all the clergy and the entire people that your son has gained for you. Father, in your goodness, read our hearts and hear our prayers. Listen graciously to this family gathered here whom you have summoned before you in your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all of your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who have left this world and passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever with them the fullness of your glory. Through Christ Jesus the Lord, to whom you bestowed on us, everything that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. In the words our Lord gave us, we speak to his and our own Father as one family of faith. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from everything that is selfish and evil. Help us to be removed from the grip of the devil. Help us to be people of peace, bringing your word to one another as we prepare the world for the return of Jesus in glory. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. May the Lord's peace be with all of you. Appropriately, let's say our son peace. This is Jesus, the Lord, who calls us to faith and peace. Happy are we who are invited to the Supper of the Lamb. May his body and blood bring us to a full and everlasting life. 